Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting PVC Power Hour. I hope you're uh, cozy in your office chairs or at home with coffee or, or beer, depending on the time of the day. Uh, my name is uh, Boris Kopiak, I'm the market manager for Geospatial Office Software and with me I have Riley Smith who is a, a TBC product manager intern and we are both based here in Colorado. Yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm excited to bring you some demonstration of the SX10 today with Boris, first time we've presented together. Uh, so today we're going to focus uh, focus on SX10 and uh, try to demonstrate why, why we believe uh, this new system is, is really good uh, for topographic uh, surveys. Uh, kind of going to demonstrate the workflows uh, and uh, go over the benefits and uh, talk about point clouds and terminology because a lot of stuff that we have been doing in TBC in the last year has been uh, revolving around uh, point clouds uh, in order to support the SX10 system uh, better. So even if you're not an SX10 user, uh, all of the stuff that we are going to be showing today can be applied to any other scanning data that you might be inputting into uh, TBC. Uh, we are going to try to optimize our time and focus mostly on uh, demonstrating the workflows. And uh, uh, as, a, as a heads up, we are running an unreleased version of TBC 380. Uh, that's planned to be released in November. So if you see a message of TBC stopped working, just just look away. Uh, we're going to try to provide a summary and, and open for questions and answers. So I encourage you to type in any questions uh, that you might have in a chat window, and we will try to address them as we go, uh, or and we'll try to leave some time at the end of the session to answer any questions. So just to recap a little bit about uh, on the uh, SX10, I'm hoping uh, all of you had a chance to uh, see some of the release materials and videos uh, on YouTube or social media. Uh, we are really excited. This has been a system that we've been working for a long time. And what, what excites me as, as, as a surveyor and Riley as well is that uh, the system is, is really meant for surveyors. It's built by surveyors for surveyors. We have gone through an extensive beta program uh, with, with uh, uh, users around the world in the last six months. They have been providing us with uh, great feedback, uh, and we have been able to incorporate that feedback in both uh, hardware, firmware field, and the office software to make sure that this system really uh, answers to any server's needs. So I have to point out it is our best total station ever, and it has additional scanning capabilities. So there's a lot of question, is it a total station, is it a scanner? Well, the answer is both. Uh, it, it is really the best total station T uh, Trimble has ever produced, uh, and it has the benefit of uh, having the ability to scan. The top applications through the beta program that we have identified uh, for, for SX10 are topographic uh, slash general surveys, uh, roadway and corridor surveys, volume, volumetric surveys, and infrastructure as well. So today we're going to focus mostly on this uh, top one, the topographic or general surveys. So when we say topographic map, uh, it means different things potentially in different parts of the world. So to cl clarify that, this is the deliverable that we are going to be producing today. So a topographic site improvement plan with typical map elements like the contour elevations, uh, uh, roads adjacent to building, uh, buildings itself, uh, vegetation, any uh, boundaries, monuments, utility lines, uh, clearances, and these are typically used for land development, so for uh, new division or uh, architecture or any civil, civil designs. So in this case, you're going to be focusing on, on, a, on a, a small kind of a drive-through uh, that is uh, going to be torn down and it's going to be redeveloped. Uh, so, uh, when we talk about the, the workflow, I, I really want to stress out the importance of using the feature coding library. So, uh, the, the, the thing with the SX10, it's still a total station. All the workflows that you apply today with your M3s, S3s, S7s, S9s, whatever you might be using, uh, still are the same. So you, one of the beauties of the system is that the, the workflows don't change for you at all. So there's just a new checkbox to scan in Trimble Access. Uh, so you will still go, go around uh, creating your feature definition library, 
uh, and then in, in Trimble Access you would use measure codes uh, to be efficient and measure with codes in the field and then drag and drop in data into TBC. Uh, you would do your QC. Uh, we have the ability to, to uh, use uh, something that we call scan station setup. We're going to talk a little bit more about where you can do optional registration in the office, classification, uh, extracting CAD elements and creating surfaces and then finally putting that plan on a sheet and plotting to, to PDF, uh, which we will try to demonstrate uh, in this session. Why using uh, SX10 for, for a survey or topographic map is uh, it really allows you to capture uh, site information quickly. Uh, it's, it's excellent for capturing uh, objects that are hard to measure. Uh, like in this example, we have uh, a lot of arches and, and, and uh, bridge, bridge elements. Uh, it allows you to measure efficiently through busy intersections. Like in this example, we, we, we captured the entire area of, this, uh, of, of the both roads passing next to our site without stepping on the road once. Uh, and uh, back in the office, you get that complete scene. Uh, you have much more data from which uh, you can model efficiently and you can create your uh, the land development plan. Uh, the value of TBC is that it provides a true integration of survey and scanning. So when we say true integration, it doesn't mean that we just drag and drop point clouds along with the total station data in. It actually, those are linked together. So everything that you used to doing with total station, like traverse adjustment, network adjustment in TBC, the point clouds move along. If you apply uh, atmospheric corrections, PPMs, or if you apply ground scale factor, the point clouds behave exactly the same as your other DR shots uh, or your other total station observation. Uh, the nice thing with, with uh, the TBC uh, in TBC version 380 is that we've worked a lot on providing additional value when working with those point clouds, so automatic classification, automatic ground extraction, uh, uh, registration tools are uh, things that provide more efficiency and, and ability to create some new deliverables quickly. And uh, uh, we've been improving our CAD tools over the last two years uh, to, to uh, uh, allow uh, users uh, to create those topographic maps efficiently and focus on automation and drafting. When we talk about the point cloud tools, uh, so there's, there's a lot that we won't be able to cover today, uh, but uh, we've been adding a lot of new navigation tools, so renderings, so you can uh, see uh, data by intensity, by color, by region color. Uh, TBC also performs colorization of the SX10 data, as uh, we will demonstrate soon. Our uh, concept of regions is really important to understand. So regions, uh, essentially, region is essentially a point cloud layer. The reason why we don't put point clouds on layers, or we don't call them layers, is that objects can only belong to one layer. Uh, with regions, a point cloud can belong to multiple regions, depending on, on the purpose of the project. A limit box is a nice tool to kind of uh, only decide what you want to see in the view. And then you have the ability to segment data, so you use a, a, a polygon selection tool and decide to keep in or keep the data out of the selection tool. Uh, ground extraction uh, and classification are very interesting, like you can see here, automatically uh, recognizing ground from vegetation, from the light poles uh, or power poles. And then some of the sampling tools. Uh, one of my favorites is the virtual DR. As we hope that we can demonstrate more of these as, as we go along in, in today's uh, presentation. Uh, just to kind of clear, clarify a little bit uh, on the terminology, uh, we will mention something that's called uh, coal, uh, scan station. And uh, scan station is a new station setup type uh, in Trimble Access. In scan station, you only have the ability to collect scans and images, so uh, scans and panoramas. Uh, you don't have the ability to collect additional measurements. Essentially, you can use SX10 as a pure scanner. If you don't want to be diligent about your leveling, if you don't, want, you don't have the ability to take back sites, you're kind of traversing down the road and you have to go under a bridge or you have to go into a tight corner, uh, you can simply use the uh, instrument in the scan setup mode. And then in uh, TBC, you have uh, something that's called scan registration. A lot of you know what registration is and have dealt with scanners in the past. 
for those that are new to scanning, scan registration is nothing more but basically stitching point clouds together. It's, it's a, 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 a least squares adjustment of point clouds, essentially. Uh, and the, one of the things with the SX10 is really we try to bring scanning to servers that haven't been scanning before. We try to make the system as easy so you don't have to have a dedicated scanning professionals in your organizations that only do scanning. Now with the SX10, everybody can become a scanning professional really quickly. Uh, I, I can attest to that because I didn't have a lot of scanning uh, knowledge uh, prior to SX10 project, but now I can, I can say I'm comfortable and maybe my next one is tackling the TX8 or some of the higher speed scanners. And we'll talk about scan refinement, essentially just, just a additional refinement on top of the uh, uh, scan registration. That was for the slides. Uh, I'm hoping now we can, we can switch to TBC and demonstrate how some of these things look like. So here's a blank TBC project. And uh, if I go to a folder where my raw data lives, and I can see, you can see here, you will have your job file at the same level as where your folder is with all of your data. So if you open this folder, you will notice inside there's images and the RWI is database where the point clouds are stored. Uh, one thing that is important is that the, the top level uh, file name and the folder name have the same, same name. Uh, the folder is just going to have the name file uh, in extension to it. And uh, so the next step is simply drag and drop the JXL or job file into TBC. And standard, as you see with the S7 or S9 or any other uh, data, you just drag and drop. And uh, so first thing you see, importing. The next thing you see, uh, TBC is now computing the normals. A uh, normal is one of the rendering methods. It allows you to quickly recognize uh, planar surfaces and it colors those differently. So if you have buildings or garage doors, uh, you can, you can uh, visualize uh, those uh, in, a, in a new rendering mode. Uh, while this is importing, we have a few questions. So Holly is asking, can you colorize S7 uh, scans with TBC 3.80? Yes, you can actually colorize. Uh, so S7, S9, and VX data uh, will be colorized automatically as, as uh, you import that data in TBC. Uh, Shane is asking, does the SX10 support the continuous topo method? Uh, I believe it does. Yeah. Uh, so again, everything that works for the for the typical total station works with the SX10. Uh, Sh uh, Shane is also asking, does the SX10 have a tracking EDM mode uh, like the S6? Uh, the only difference between the S6 or the S series. And, uh, and the SX10, it, it, uh, it doesn't have the active EDM uh, tracking. So the MT1000 works with the SX10 only in passive mode, uh, not, not in the active mode. Uh, so as, as you see, the, the TVC has finished computing the normals. <clears throat> and the next step uh, in, in, a, in a few seconds that's going to show up is going to be colorization process. So we don't colorize scans in the field. Uh, basically, we colorize the scans as they come, uh, come uh, to, the, to the office. Another uh, question related to Holly's questions, can you colorize S7? Uh, uh, so you can colorize, and you, we also now apply PPM scale correction and ground scale factor on the, on the uh, previous uh, or, the, or the other total station data instruments. So this colorizing uh, point cloud is going to run now. Maybe if, uh, in this case we have, I think, seven uh, SX10 scans, uh, scans in the project. And I think it took us about four to five minutes uh, to, to scan. Uh, the, the thing is that you don't have to, uh, if, if uh, color is not important for your project deliverable, you can stop, you can say stop and colorize later and you can, you can see the data. And uh, all the colorization, you can see part of my project here is colorized, part of it is, is still grayscale because I, I stopped my colorization. Uh, my point clouds are a little bit big. Uh, and uh, you can see here the total station observations, uh, measurements that have been done in the field, and part that has been colorized. If you want to colorize later, uh, you can simply uh, open the colorize command 
and you can colorize uh, colorize uh, scans at any point. And you can see here, uh, green indicates that part of this scan has been colorized already. Um, the other thing is we recommend before you colorize, sometimes it helps if you process panoramas. So blending images mm -hmm. and balancing exposure on images uh, makes the colorization uh, a little bit, little bit better. So one thing to note is also that there's uh, things that kind of uh, pile up on top of each other here. Th those are three uh, stations that we collected in a scan setup mode. Uh, we, you, we don't necessarily recommend it for topographic survey to use scan station setup, but if you decide to do so, this is how they're going to show up. So these are the observations that we have used with the backside mode. So we started here with the station 52, then we then we moved uh, here to another station, uh, then uh, to station 51, and then we finished here with the station, uh, I think 50, uh, and uh, there was an alleyway here, and in that alley there was a wall, and we collected three uh, scan stations along the alley without taking any backside. Uh, backsides uh, to, to our uh, other data sets. And this is how that data shows up. It shows up in the centroid of your project just on top of each other. We use this project because we want to demonstrate to you the process of registering and stitching those, uh, those scans together. So since I didn't colorize, I'm just going to close this uh, project and I'm going to open a project where actually uh, I have the colorized but unregistered. So to save us five minutes of, of that colorization, you can see here all the data in, in, in color. And uh, if you look at your project explorer, everything is kind of the same. You can see the JXL. Uh, you can see here the, the station uh, station setups. Uh, they have if they have a scan next to it, you will see a scan. And then you can see this 3, 301, 302, and 303. Those are your stations that haven't uh, been registered. Um, we can even show this in a, in a 3D view just to kind of give you a little bit of sense of all of without having or not completing the registration makes it a little bit more uh, difficult. I don't know about how, how quickly is the speed of your internet connection, but if you see some lagging, it might be because of that, TBC is actually uh, spinning the point clouds uh, pretty smoothly. And you can see the, here the drive-through that we are trying to kind of map today, or the site that we are uh, trying to map uh, map today. I'm going to close the 3D view and going back to the plan view. Boris, just a quick question before you move on. Sure. Those those uh, free stations, those scan stations that are in the right-hand side of the plan view, um, is there a reason why they're placed there? Why the why the specific station or those scans are placed in in, in that certain coordinate? Uh, uh, originally, when we when, when before we did any any work, they would go on zero zero. And if you're working in a state plane coordinates, like in this case, you would have data very far from each other. So we thought if we place the unregistered scan stations in the center of your project, it's going to help you visualize where those free uh, stations are. So they're still kind of confusing to look at because there's three stations on top of each other. So you can see some of the building outlines kind of overlapping each other at the moment. Did I answer your question, yeah. Riley? Uh, so if you go to the point cloud tab, and this is where most of the point cloud operations uh, are going to happen, you're going to launch a scan registration command that's going to take the TBC into the uh, kind of a different mode. So this is one of the first examples where we have of, of taking over TBC's interface by, by the command. And you can see here the concept of those uh, scan stations or uh, total station data that had the back sites, and those are uh, qualified here as reference stations. And then you can see on the right-hand side window, you can see the, the scan that happened in the alley. You can see that wall. Uh, and uh, you can see here the white blob where the uh, SX-10 was positioned. You can see traces of that building or the drive-through that, uh, that we can see here. So that wall is this wall here. In the bottom, you can see the registration results uh, in two different colors. So you can see the red is the, uh, is the reference, and the green is the moving station. And in this case, I'm moving the station uh, uh, 301. 
if I go to the drop down list for the moving station, I can see all three stations uh, that that uh, can be moved uh, in in this case. Note that you cannot register station, uh, stations that have a, a, a backside observation attached to them. So those behave uh, as a rigid body like survey observations. Uh, we do have some flexibility. If you want to separate uh, scans from those uh, what we call regular survey stations, then you can create a scan station from there and you can create a duplicate point cloud and that will allow you to move the point cloud belonging to a station setup that had a backside. But if it had a backside, if it was uh, surveyed like an S7 or S6 or, or, or VX, in that case you cannot register that data using the scan registration command. Only scans, scan setups can be used, uh, registered using moving station. Uh, another thing to note is that you can use this scan registration command to register any other data that you might have. So if you have uh, a scan data coming from other scanners, you can you can uh, use the TBC scan registration. So what we've done with scan registration is we took the uh, registration from Trimble Realworks, we took the cloud to cloud registration, and we placed it into TBC basically. Uh, you can uh, set up some of your uh, residual settings here and uh, see the thresholds of how success successful the registration is. So once uh, so I haven't done anything basically. I was just kind of navigating around showing you. So I just opened the command, my 301 was already selected, and I just have to click one button uh, called automatically register pair. And this will uh, find the common uh, points between a reference station and a moving station, and it's going to bring these two together uh, by, by those common points. So uh, I noticed there's a box below the automatic, or several boxes below the automatically uh, register pair button. Uh, what are those? It looks like a pick point pairs. Yeah. What, what is that uh, for, Boris? So the uh, occasionally, if you don't have a good station overlap, uh, the automatic registration might not work as well. So in that case, the fallback method is uh, picking point pairs. So you can pick as many point pairs as you want between uh, reference station and moving station, and uh, and you can refine your registration using manual uh, pairs. Like in this case, uh, you can see here the resulting uh, registration. Typically, you want to focus on an area that has an overlap, like you can see here, green and red, uh, red data uh, together, uh, and uh, you can inspect how well uh, they, they, they overlap. I typically like to pick a cylindrical object or like a light pole here, and I look at that that light pole uh, from a, from a top-down view, and and I although this one was a wooden one, so it's probably not a good example, but you find a, a rigid body in the project, and you want to uh, see how well your data registered. Um, if if you if you are unhappy how the automatic registration uh, what it produced. Uh, you can simply go to picking points and you can further refine. If I zoom out here, you can see, uh, so here, uh, TBC will, add, uh, I think we are still at the, um, station one, but if you're happy with, with this one, you can simply say add to reference. And TBC will automatically advance you to the next uh, scan station uh, in, in the project. So you can see here, 302 is now next one uh, to be registered, so it's a further down in the alley. You can see our drive through is over there, so looking at the same. So it was somewhere here where my mouse is pointing. I don't know if you are you able to see that, uh, but uh, you can again see here the the resulting and the, and the scans there. So you can kind of iteratively repeat the process. After every pair, you can optimize that that individual pair. And there's a concept of overall refinement. So you can move to the overall refinement once you re registered everything, and you can say refine overall registration. Uh, since I haven't registered everything, I'm wondering how that's going to work. But uh, while we're waiting for the the refinement to process, uh, one of the questions that came in uh, that I think we should answer right now from Robert was, can you use the, utilize the limit box during registration? Um, and and uh, I guess the question that I have is what other tools can you use in the registration windows to check maybe um, your automatic registration to see if it's 
Yes, you, you, in, the, in that uh, uh, registration results, the bottom window, you can use a, a, a limit box. So as I said, if you want to isolate and focus on one object of interest, like that uh, light pole or power pole or, or building facade, uh, you can use the limit box to narrow down to that uh, to that area. Uh, so the one time where you actually get to uh, see the report is in the refinements. You have to run the overall refinement to generate the registration report. So that's pretty important. I know a lot of you uh, want to have that report as a uh, as as a proof of registration uh, for traceability purpose. So it's really important if you want to uh, save the report that at this stage you say yes and uh, this is going to open a, a scanned refinement report. And uh, in the refi refinement report you can see some of the cloud-to-cloud -cloud errors, you can see the overlap and the confidence uh, confidence level. So I only had one, one station uh, adjustment here, so that's, that's the reason why you're seeing it uh, that way. Uh, if you want to register to known control points, you can use the georeferencing tab and you can uh, almost like a target based registration except the fact that we don't automatically register, uh, uh, recognize targets at this point so uh, we still recommend if you're a power user uh, or a scanning power user we uh, we have Trimble Realworks where the workflows are same with just extend and uh, you can just drag and drop JXL into Trimble Realworks and you will have much more uh, registration capabilities there. But uh, the registration, again, for the purpose of a topographic pro uh, project, I, I'm not anticipating that you would be using a lot of scan station setups, uh, but we just wanted to show it here as one of the opportunities uh, of things you can do. Actually, I, I prefer to avoid scan station setups and one of the beauties with, with the S extend is that there's no registration at all. You just you use your uh, backside foresight workflow, and all of the data is automatically there where it needs to be. So uh, we just showed a more complicated example in this case uh, to to demonstrate and explain that uh, that concept of of registration. Uh, with that, I'm gonna close uh, this project, and uh, I'm gonna open a project where. So basically, just a continuation of this project, where uh, where we uh, registered all three scans. Before we move on from registration, Boris, maybe let's answer. There's a, quite a few questions that came in from it. So while we're on this topic, maybe we'll talk about it a little more. Um, one of the questions that came in from Robert was, "Will TBC autosave during registration in case of crash?" It will not autosave. So it's very important, and uh, Boris and I will both stress this: that you save um, periodically when you're doing registration or any point cloud work for that matter uh, to ensure that you don't lose that, that, that work that you perform. Yeah, I think we even in the in the project settings we have we have added a setting here for auto save. Might might be under user options. Um, it's not auto save but a, pro, a prompt. A save project reminder. So you can set up a reminder to save your project every five to ten minutes or uh, how often uh, you want. Uh, another important thing in the uh, since I'm here in the user options, so again, I went here and next to the project settings to the right of it, there is a command called user options. It's uh, that one is important because there's a there's some point cloud settings uh, to know. Uh, so one of those some of those scan registration properties. So if you have problems recognizing colors, uh, you can set your reference and, and moving scan color. Uh, so the default colors are red and green. If you don't like that, you can you can change that. But other more important settings are, are ability on how many uh, points you want to see in in your project. So what we do with the with TBC and RealWorks, we have a concept that's called dynamic dynamic point cloud loading. So basically, we use the RAM memory to to load point clouds. And we can use up to half of your physical RAM. So my computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I could uh, amp this number up to 16 gigabytes. That would allow me to see more point clouds in the project. Uh, there's no direct correlation, uh, unfortunately, between the number of points and uh, and the RAM. It all depends on your on your system uh, properties. Uh, but uh, essentially, you can see the 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 answer is you can see unlimited number of points in TBC uh, as you, as as your RAM size moves up. 
uh, which leads to one of the questions is uh, what are the physical requirements or computer hardware requirements for working with point clouds. So we strongly recommend that you have uh, an external graphics card, even a basic uh, NVIDIA, uh, I think M1000 or, or uh, something like that would, would uh, do the trick. Uh, so I think I have here a basic NVIDIA with two gigabyte uh, graphic, graphic card. Uh, you don't have to have a super computing uh, or, com or gamers graphic card. Uh, it will work okay. The other second important hardware piece is a uh, solid state drive. Uh, there's a lot of reading and writing uh, when you save and you colorize and things like that, uh, where solid state drive is going to make an impact. And RAM, RAM if you want to see, if you have massive point cloud projects, if you want to see 10 billion points in TVC at a time, uh, it's, it's recommended that you have as much RAM as you, as you can. Uh, the, the processor, I'm not sh I don't think it's critical, so i5 or i7. Will, will be uh, fine. Uh, the other important settings here is how many points you want to, uh, uh, point cloud points you want to include in the surface creation, uh, how many points you want to include in the, in the spatial uh, sampling and, and, and things like that. So pay attention to these uh, 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 user options. And one of the options we have enabled in TBC 370 is that you can now import and export these options uh, so you can uh, share share those with with other users as well. So I'm back here with uh, the TBC project where uh, basically those three uh, stations that 3, 301, 302, and 303 have have been registered. So if I follow that process, in this case, that automatically register pairs worked perfectly. So I just hit three times that automatically register uh, pairs, and I did one uh, refinement. And you can see now if I open the in the three d view, you can see the the project uh, kind of registered together uh, in in color. You can see your total station observations. So maybe uh, I'm gonna uh, leave it from here uh, to Riley. Uh, so Riley can uh, cover more of the uh, feature extraction. Hey guys. So what we're gonna go into first is now that everything is registered, um, generally, before the registration, too, you take care of things like any errors in your total station observations, prism heights, things like that. Um, now we're going to move into classifying the point clouds. So right now, if you go to the Project Explorer, you can see that we have a one a singular point cloud region. Um, when we import SX10 data or any um, scan data into TBC right now, it merges it all into one region on import. Uh, can you show us how many points there are yeah, in the so, properties? So when you select that region, you can also right-click and select properties, and this will bring up any information about that region, what it's classified under for uh, regards to the LAS format, as well as the color and the rendering settings. Here you can see the number of points. So we're looking at close to 30 million points in this point cloud. So one of the... One of the cool and really slick new features that we have in uh, TVC is an auto classification tool. So under the point cloud tab, we have this classify regions. So with this command, what we do is we extract four, um, four point cloud uh, types, I guess, feature types. I think they're based on the LAS classification system. So we have the ground, buildings, poles and signs, and high vegetation. So it's a pretty simple command. You select the region you want to extract from, and then press extract. And depending on the size of your point clouds, how many points you have, um, this can take anywhere from one minute to five minutes. So in this case, you can see at the bottom, there's a loading bar here. So while it's doing that, we'll talk a little bit more about this. We also have a extract ground command here up at the top. This uses a similar algorithm as the classify regions command, um, but in this case, it's only looking at the ground region. Um, so this is good if you're if that's all you're interested mm -hmm. in and you don't care about uh, the buildings, pole signs, and the high vegetation. But in this case, because we have um, those four class types in this project, we want to separate them out. One thing to note too, when you do uh, the classify regions command, it is going to create um, separate regions for each individual pole and sign as well as um, individual buildings that the algorithm finds are separate. So 
in this case, we have several buildings, several power pole signs. So we're going to have um, more than just four regions created. We'll have uh, a dozen or more. And uh, we can utilize these commands in the regions group here, uh, such as merge regions, to uh, bring those all together. So if I want all my poles and signs in one group, I can select them all and then merge them as well. Um, if any of the regions are classified incorrectly, which is, which is um, likely to happen in a lot of cases if you don't have um, dense point clouds. As, uh, the more points you have and, and the, more, the higher the density, uh, the better classification results you're going to get. So you can't expect to take a really sparse point cloud from, let's say, an S7 and perform this command on it and get um, high results. <laughs> Yeah, so essentially, it would be the same if uh, if we, using the ground extraction would be the same as using the extract classified point cloud regions and just selecting ground. Yeah, exactly. So. Which you can do the same. You can do that from this command as well. Or if I just wanted to extract one of these regions as opposed to all four, you can do that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm not sure why is this taking taking longer than. Uh, yeah, it's taking uh, a bit of time. Um, while it's doing this, maybe we'll answer a few more questions that came up. I know there are some more registration questions um, that came in while we were uh, going over this. So one of the ones uh, from Harry here was, did you label the unregistered scan stations? Um, in this case, it was free 01, 02, and 03. Or does the software recognize and label these as unregistered stations? Um, once uh, the classification is done, I can show this uh, in the Project Explorer, but there's actually different symbology. Um, in uh, the Project Explorer for a scan station as opposed to a, con a conventional survey station. There's different symbols. Uh, and with a scan station, there's just a scan associated with it, while with the survey station, there'll be actual setup information, orientation information. Okay. A question from Sean was, uh, will TBC register their colorized TX5 data? Uh, so TBC can, color, uh, can register TX5 data, but not colorized. So if you import uh, uh, TX5 uh, in TBC, you might be able to register, but not colorize. Mm -hmm. One thing to note in TBC, we don't do a global cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration, so we do pairwise. So if you are using a high-speed scanner today, uh, it's not going to be as automatic as in RealWorks when you do plane-based registration. Essentially, you you adjust, uh, you have a concept of, as we said, reference and moving. So if you have 120, you would you would kind of cl click on that automatically register pairs 119 times, so that might not be feasible uh, for for you if if you're uh, using a high speed scanner. Mm -hmm. uh, another question that came in is from Harry is uh, are only flat targets supported at this time in TBC? Um, right now we don't support any targets. Um, per se. Uh, if the georeferencing command, what you're looking at is any features that were picked up in your scan, let's say uh, the corner of the building, the top of uh, a fire hydrant, um, that you have known coordinates for, you can use that uh, georeferencing command to associate the scan point uh, to your uh, global or grid coordinate. Yep. Uh, there's another question below, uh, just uh, if you can move your mouse, Michael. Will TBC colorize a regular job file, or does it have to be imported as a as a JXL? So TBC will colorize uh, if you drag and drop the job file. I, I just it's my habit. I like to work with JXLs, uh, and I strongly recommend all of you that are still using DC files to to kind of start using JXL more. So every time before I leave the field, I will export fixed formats in Trimble Access and always use JXL. It just gives you a lot of more traceability. If something goes wrong with the job file, it, it's hard to tell because it's a binary file. So it seems like our classification yeah. finished. So, yeah, the classification finished. And you see that uh, it's colored the regions in um, specific colors. So uh, the vegetation is in green. I'm just going to bring up the, uh, the uh, view filter manager and turn off the total station observations to clear up our point clouds a bit here. Uh, John, John is asking how long did it took us to perform these scans with the SX-10. Uh, so the SX-10 takes uh, 12 minutes to, uh, to create. So these were the, the coarse panoramas. Uh, so uh, just a quick panorama. So 12 minutes for a quick panorama. 
that has, I think, about 7 million scans in, in a full dome uh, scan. Uh, 12 minutes, I think, for the scan and two and a half uh, minutes for images. So about 15 minutes per station. So it took us about half a day uh, on this site to collect scans, but we also took uh, a lot of uh, total station observations, as Riley is going to show later. Yeah. So um, quickly to go over the classification. So you can see in the Project Explorer, it's created um, 24 different building um, regions, and that's, this is due to the algorithm picking up several buildings and what it thinks is a building and what it, where it determines to be separate. So you can see um, the front of this building was picked up, but the top was not. And this is due to uh, the point cloud density once again. So the, the more density you, or the higher density you have, the better um, classification results you get. And you can see there's some trees as well. You can change these colors by um, just go, selecting the region right-clicking and going to the properties and changing the, the uh, color here, the region color. But uh, right now this is how TBC automatically um, colors the, the building vegetation, poles, signs, and ground regions. The ground will be in brown, the building's blue, uh, poles and signs in red, and vegetation in green. Uh, if I want to merge these, uh, so let's say I want all my buildings on one layer or I want to separate um, this building here, which is actually the, the structure, the site that uh, is um, uh, that we're looking at for this survey. And we see that building 12. Well, I want to merge everything else onto a, um, a different uh, building's region. So I can select those. I'll select all the rest of these buildings here. So you're just holding control down. Yeah. Selected. Okay. Holding control button and clicking on each region. And then I can go up here under the regions group and select merge regions. And what this will do is it'll just combine all of these regions into one region. This is just, just helps more with the organization. And I can give it a name. I'll just call it buildings or maybe other buildings. OK. And you see here. Um, as the regions get merged, they'll, they'll slowly <laughs> disappear from Project Explorer. And then once they're all gone, there'll be a uh, other buildings region. Um, and so I notice here, Riley, that uh, it's colored a part of the tree as a building. Yeah, right here. Yeah, can you show us how to, maybe on, a, on maybe on another yeah. example, how to clean that up? Yeah, so if I, if I want to work on this building here, maybe I want to draw the outline or determine the height, um, what I can do is go to the View Filter Manager, and in the Point Cloud Regions tab, I know that this is Building 12 region. I can right-click and select View Only This. This will turn off all the other Point Cloud regions. And you can see there's still some uh, photo stations here. Those can be um, turned off in the Photogrammetry tab. I'll just turn off everything in that tab for now. So yeah, as Boris mentioned, there's some trees that were picked up a part of this building. That's just due to the close proximity uh, to the uh, to the building that was found by the algorithm. So one way to segment out uh, this information from the building so that we can perform some CAD um, tools on the building outline is using the um, polygon or rectangle select tools. I like the polygon because you can make um, a really precise selection with this tool. So what you do is click, hold, and drag. And this will start your line, or your polygon, sorry. And then you can select the point cloud that you want to be removed, or the parts of the point cloud you want to be removed. And then when you get to the end, just double click. And this will select that region. And there's two um, commands that I like using for the segmentation. Instead of creating new regions um, and separating in that method, we can use the keep in and uh, keep out commands. So in this case, we're going to use the keep out because what this will do is it'll remove this part, uh, this selected part of the point cloud region um, from uh, the viewing, uh, from the plan view or the 3D view. And it'll essentially hide that region. So if I select keep out, now it's gone. And I've got a pretty clear uh, building outline. And I can start drawing on this. If you want to um, get that point cloud information back, you can use the uh, get all points. And what that'll do is it'll regenerate and um, show all the hidden points that you use to keep out or keep in content on. So, 
So typically now when you've cleaned out, you would select that and maybe create a new region. Yes, yeah. so I could select this and I could go create region right here. And I could call it, let's say, drive through. Okay. And this will create a new region and it's colored it looks like by um, in the rendering settings by elevation. And I can change that to whatever I want. Let's say I want to show true color so I can see what's what was actually colorized in the point cloud. And now um, the next step is starting to use some of the CAD tools that we have in TBC working with point clouds. So we have the, uh, the typical line string command that uh, I think most uh, TBC users are used to uh, seeing. And this is great for uh, snapping to point clouds and creating uh, line string objects. So uh, I'm going to select the line string option. You can give it a name if you want. Yes, no, that's up to you. I'm going to auto close this line string because I want it to be a uh, closed building outline. And I'll select OK. So did we use the feature coding here? We did. We did. Uh, we can go over that after. Mm -hmm. um, first, I'll finish. I'll do this build. I'll show how the building outline can mm -hmm. be created. So um, with the point cloud, uh, you can snap to uh, the point cloud with any of our CAD tools. So uh, in this case, maybe I want to snap to the corner of this building. I could simply select it, and TBC will pick up that corner elevation, and I can move around the building, selecting other corners like this. And oops, lost the view there. And if you have some corners that maybe aren't level with uh, the ground or are at, a, are at a higher elevation, you can use some of the snap commands that we have as well. So um, if you right click while in the line, line string command, it brings up uh, snap options and, uh, or Kogo options, I guess is a better way to put them. So we have things like bearing, bearing, um, snapping to points, middle segments, things like that. The bearing bearing command I like using in um, areas where I don't have a point cloud. Let's say if at the corner here I don't actually have a point cloud here, but I have somewhat of a line bearing uh, along this, I can I can uh, use the bearing bearing command to actually select a point of reference, a bearing, the other cor corner, maybe another point of reference, and it will actually snap. Give it an elevation. I'll say it's the same elevation as this and it will create a point there. So I urge uh, users to utilize those commands, not only with point clouds, but in other situations as well. For time's sake, I'm not going to show the rest of the creation of the building outline just because we're, we only have so much time to demonstrate these. So, so, I mean, in this case, you notice that the point cloud, we didn't have dense point cloud at the bottom of this building. So as SX10 is still a total station, I strongly recommend that, that you collect all the critical points with the, with the pole uh, sometimes it's easier to walk over a few meters and just collect uh, the data that you need versus then moving the station setup and, and scanning because that was one of the rookie mistakes we did in some of the first projects we did with ESX10. We went out and we scanned everything. Uh, so you should still rely on, on your traditional survey techniques and only scan objects that are hard to reach or where, where scanning is going to pay off. So. There's a lot of thinking involved when you go out with the SX10 and what do you want to scan and what you, what you don't want to scan. So keep, keep that in mind. So what we'll do next is, uh, as Boris mentioned before, we did measure um, quite a few total, total station observations in the field. If I uh, turn on the points, the view filter manager, you can see several of uh, these points all around the drawing. And um, we did feature code these. And it's, it's really stressed on the users to um, pick out certain features that you know will not be able to, or will not be picked up in the scan, such as maybe manhole covers. If, if the grass is a little too uh, high, it might you might miss water valves, things like that. So we need to drag and drop the FXL file. Exactly. So we'll drag the FXL file in, and then we'll go to the process feature codes, and here we'll select our Excel and click process. You can see when we process this, some of the labeling is a little off, but we can we can change that in the text style. Up here, select standard, and just change the height to maybe 
maybe half a meter. Okay, perfect. So um, right away, you see there were some some um, signs that were coded in the field, as well as uh, trees. Um, objects like this, uh, they're sometimes easier just to collect with a single point measurement as opposed to scanning, segmentating, and then creating a point back in TBC. So those are things that you have to keep in mind. Um, one thing to look at here is um, the scan data can be used to check um, some of your feature coded line work as well. So you can see there's this line that we have here. I'm going to change the point cloud uh, reg um, rendering to true color. And we're going to visually check in a 3D view this, this line string that was collected at the sidewalk. So you see there's this, this arc here that shouldn't be here. You can see that it's pretty discernible that there's a fence as well as the, cur or, uh, the sidewalk line runs right here. So one way to do that is right-clicking on this and selecting edit. This will bring up the edit line string command. And in the edit line string command, we can actually change the segments of that line string. So if I select the segment, I can see that it's an arc when it should be a straight line. So simply I can just select straight, save, and voila, we've got a fixed line string. I would say this is one of my favorite things with, with, with having scans it just gives you that traceability and you can see quickly if you made any mistakes very often you forgot to change the prism height uh, or, or you top, uh, code the top of the fence and you actually wanted to get the elevation on the bottom of the fence this is where scanning uh, really comes in handy even just from that traceability in Q QA um, this line string here uh, you can see there's some issues in the field here this curve should have been rounded and there, there was some some um, issues with the feature coding. So what you can do, um, I want this still to follow a curve. I can actually change this to a smooth curve, save, and then I'll move to the next segment. Also change this to a smooth curve, and you see it's starting to make more of a, uh, a clear shape there of where it should be. And I can change this to smooth smooth curve as well if I'd like. And you notice that these don't connect here. The simple way of connecting a, a line string is in the properties you just select the auto close option and select yes and done. Another thing I want to show um, in regards to the CAD objects is the offset command. This is great in the case of, um, of curves so if I want to create a um, the flow line, uh, the edge of curve, top, back, things like that and right click on the line string, select offset line as well as it's in the uh, CAD tab um, or uh, not cat tab, sorry, the offset command, or edit tab, the offset line here. And you can give it a name like any other line string. Select the line you want to offset. So in this case, this one here, we can give it an offset distance. So if I say maybe um, 0 0.3 meters, um, if I want to choose the side to offset, I can select this box and then choose the line or the side I want to offset. I can give it a vertical offset, maybe 0 0.05, and click apply. And this will create a line string, and then you know you can you can continue on if I want to make more and more line strings. This one looks like it was a little off in uh, the distance. And an another uh, quick thing while we're while we're uh, looking at that is the measure distance, um, angle, uh, inverse commands. Those all work on point clouds as well. So if I want to actually check to see how long this curve is, I can select here, here and it will bring up that distance as well as the vertical distance um, along the curve. And you can save these like you would any other measurement. As well, we implemented a new command in TBC called the measure point. Um, this works on any object, and what you can do is select, um, let's say, a point, cloud point, any point, cloud point, even just this random one here will select, and it will bring up the coordinates of that point as well as the region and the scan that it's associated to, and I can save that information save, I can give it a layer, give it a name, and it displays it in the Project Explorer over here under uh, stored measurements. All right. So, so one of the quick ways to, to extract geometry is using the station view, and uh, maybe Riley can show us the virtual DR. Yeah, so so what we can do is find a station, uh, let's turn, turn all that, let's turn on the raw data here and photogrammetry data and um, 
so we see there's a station here. You can kind of tell by the, the missing point cloud here with a hole in the ground because the station isn't able to see um, in the near vicinity to where it's set up. We can select that station and right click to open a new station view. And in the station view, what it is is it's a it's a perspective from the station. So so you, you'll be able to see essentially from where the SX-10 or the S-7 was set up, the images, the point clouds, um, the total station observation, and any of the points that were taken. And we've implemented a new command, as Boris mentioned, is the, uh, in the station view is the virtual DR. And this virtual DR command, what it does is it takes overlapping images and, and uses uh, the station view orientation and the depth from the point cloud to actually calculate points in this view. So you see all uh, the orange lines in the station view. These are uh, image frames. Yeah, one, one thing to note with, with, the, with the SX-10, we have actually five cameras on board. So you, you, those are all the images that you're seeing and, and all the frames. Yeah, so and I can turn, turn those off here in the, in the uh, view filter manager under image frame. And those will remove. And you see that the image looks kind of grainy. Um, this isn't actually the image. Those are the point clouds over top, overlaid over top the image. And so if you turn off the point clouds, uh, you'll actually see um, the clear, definable image. Now let's give it a second to turn off. There's so many images in here, it's going to take a second to turn them all off. You see there, like I mentioned before, there's total station observations in the points they're associated to. So how the virtual uh, DR command works is there's a checkbox here down at the bottom and this turns the virtual DR on and off and uh, so if you check this what it does is now all of the uh, the CAD, the measure commands, um, and create point, create line string, things like that, they all will use the virtual DR functionality to create the positions for those objects. So what, one of my biggest concerns when we started working with the SX-10 is that if you scan in the, in the full dome, that you might not get point exactly on the corner where you need it. So in this case, we leverage the combination of, of point clouds and images to extract the, the uh, point exactly where you need to need to have a point. Mm -hmm. So so all of the commands that extract data like line string, measure points, uh, create CAD points. They use combination of point clouds and images, and seems like sometimes the, the the station view is not as fast if you have both point clouds and images on. Yeah. So if you turn point clouds off or if you turn images off, it it behaves much much faster. Yeah. So we'll turn off the point cloud regime. See that gets rid of that grainy feel to it as well. So I've got the virtual DR selected. Now let's just create a simple point. So if I select create point and select the coordinate. Now let's say I want the, the corner of this building, uh, or even a, a window. That's a pretty common, um, pretty common workflow. Is selecting windows I actually use the line string that would make more sense. So what I can do is select uh, the corner of the window, and I want. You notice it's not a selection tool; it's now a window tool. So if I select here, it brings up a zoomed location of that um, of that pick there, and you can actually definite or. Um, more precisely define the location you want. So if I want this corner here, I can select that. And it oh, looks like we don't have a point cloud point. Let's see here. Let's see if we turn, uh, turn them off. Yeah, I'll turn those back I on. I think uh, what one thing that can speed up things in the station view, if we uncheck remove parallax. Ah, okay. Because so, that, that can uh, slow us down. Because TBC is kind of computing that right distance of image from the, from the focal point. One more second to turn on all those point clouds again. Yeah, it's uh, important to note that we're working with 30 million points here. So, um, as Boris mentioned before, this uh, the more points you have, uh, it's going to affect your um, TBC's performance. So we'll, we'll, remove, we'll turn off the remove parallax so and get this working a little faster. So maybe in the meantime, as we're running out of time, uh, we can uh, load the, the finished project. Oops. Yeah, 
traffic. PPC project? Yeah, this one here. Just double click. So, load that up. Okay, so back in this one now, we've got a, the station view loading a little quicker. Um, that was a good suggestion by Boris to turn off the remove parallax. Um, we'll select the coordinate back to the window point, select here, and it creates a point there. Oops. That's opening up. <laughs> opening up the other TBC project. And I'll continue to move around the window, selecting the points. And I'll just go to this middle rung of the window here. So even if you don't have point cloud exactly on the corner, uh, so what we do is basically we get horizontal and vertical angle from the from the image, and we get the distance information from the from the point clouds. So that that allows us to create create point very accurately. Uh, yeah, and once I'm done, I can select the auto close option, and there I've got a window created or an outline of a window created. Yeah. So this kind of this. This kind of goes over uh, most of the CAD tools that we have working with point clouds. And uh, I urge you to use the virtual VR a little more and uh, test it out and see what you think. Uh, so now we're going to move on. Let's close this up. And we'll go into, we'll just close out this project and, and um, look at our finished project. As due to time, we can't show you the whole process. But we'll show you uh, what we were able to create. So I'll go to the plan view. So when we're all finished, said and done, we were able to create a building outline. We were able to do hatching. You can see there's a, a asphalt hash, hatching as well as concrete. Um, there's uh, labeling. We have the features. We have underground utilities. A lot of information here, as well as the contours. So an important, important thing that we won't show in this uh, power hour, but definitely in a future power hour we're going to go over, is creating uh, surfaces and contours from uh, SX10 point cloud data. So that's where the ground extraction is really useful. Uh, so you would extract ground, and you would then create your topo map uh, with surfaces uh, and contours. So Riley, how long did it take you to create this in TBC? To create the, the project and get it to a finished um, plotting stage, it took me roughly eight hours. So one, one day. One day. So, in one, so it took us half a day to collect the data, and basically one day to... to uh, to create these deliverables. And this was all done in TBC? This was all done in TBC, yeah. Everything from start to finish was done in TBC. And you see, just quickly, we'll overlay the point cloud regions and see how everything kind of fits. Um, what we've done, too, is we actually drag and dropped a, uh, a um, VCL template into this drawing and created a uh, topple plan sheet view. And so you can see that's opened up already over here. And we used a title block. Uh, we inserted a legend, which I had as a DWG file, and I inserted it as a, as a CAD block. Uh, we have scale bar, all the, the typical information you would have on a topographic plan, titles, things like that. And then we have a Dyna view here of um, the plot. So all of those tools are located under drafting ribbons. Yeah, exactly here. So, so the Dyna view option here. Um, creating, importing blocks, so scale, scale, uh, scale bar, the hatching options, uh, images. I inserted this Trimble logo here using the insert images. Um, once you're ready, uh, your, your template's done and uh, you're ready to plot, you can go to the print command here and we can go print plan set. And this is where we can select our, um, our topple plan custom sheet. So we can select our plan set. I want to plot a single sheet. And I've selected my topple plan. And that's good. And we'll OK. And it'll print the PDF out for us. So this is uh, going over how um, a typical common day-to-day -day survey workflow can be done all in TBC without using external software. And now we have a finished project. Um, obviously, I mean, the legend and the coloring can be changed um, for the plotting purposes, but I added in yellow. So, so if you're not uh, if you're not using TBC for the final map creation, uh, we've added uh, a lot of new exporters to TBC, so you can export uh, that cleaned up ground data or classified data uh, straight into. Let me just close out this. Uh, you can uh, export that data via recap or pod format to Autodesk or Bentley if you're doing your plotting there. So, or after feature coding or uh, cleaning up your line work. 
you can export both Linework and Point Cloud to 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 CAD for uh, final drawing uh, creation. Exactly. There's so, some tools that we just don't have in TBC, but but for um, these, uh, the workflows that we've gone over, um, that we mentioned at the start, things like the uh, the volumetric surveys, the topographic surveys, um, infrastructure has built roading. Uh, these are very very um, um, applicable applications for the SX10 data using TBC where we can go from start to finish with one software package. Okay. So uh, let's uh, try to answer a few more questions, Riley. Uh, so maybe, Michael, if you can make the questions bigger. Uh, so this, uh, what resolution was this project shot with? So this was all uh, full dome scans, uh, as as we mentioned. Um, they were standard. Yeah. standard. <coughs> Mark is asking these new commands are you referring as a part of the scanning module in TBC. So a lot of those region management, navigation, rendering commands are part of TBC complete. Uh, the scan registration, automatic classification, ground extraction. We haven't covered the the, the uh, sampling tools or converting point clouds to to, uh, to CAD points. Uh, some of those tools are part of the scanning module. Uh, what is the point cloud density in millimeters? Uh, I forgot, Riley, on the, in the uh, full dome. Do you remember what was the resolution at 50 meters? That that I don't know off the top of my head, but we can. Uh, I've got some information here. Um, if you go to this link um, to the uh, SX10 webpage, there's a data sheet on the SX10, and it'll actually give you that information. I think it has. Uh, it's either 50 meters or 100 meters that it gives the resolution to. But I think at 50 met meters, you're looking at around one centimeter, one and a half centimeters, uh, depending on the uh, scan or the type of scan you do from the four options that we have. So we have the the coarse the standard, the fine, and the super fine. Uh, so the, that uh, that is all in the spec sheet. So even in Trimble Access, as you select a different scan resolution, you will see that uh, you will see what is the point cloud space, spacing uh, at a distance. So go to this site, and you will see that uh, those specs. So um, yeah, I just found some information. Uh, just to go back and reiterate that it's uh, at a standard. Scan setting at 50 meters, you're looking at 25 millimeters resolution, and at a coarse um, scan setting, it's 50 millimeters. Uh, Mark is asking, what is up uh, with the hill in the middle of YYY Street? This this was uh, actually the top of a car I selected when I was creating the surface, and I didn't uh, didn't take it out in the surface creation. That's why you see the contours going up there, um, but that can be fixed easy enough. Yeah. Uh, Mel is asking, will virtual DR only work uh, uh, with the CAD module? The virtual DR is part of the scanning module. Yeah. Um, Tom, Thomas asked, uh, can offset distances be picked in the cloud? Yes, they can. I, sh I can uh, actually probably show that really quickly. Um, this is, yeah, TBC, yep. um, if you use the offset command, go to edit, offset line, and you, you know the distance or you want to use the distance, uh, of a known feature. Let's see, we'll select this line. Uh, distance, you can just select in the point cloud and it will read that distance in the offset. And you can do the same thing with the vertical as well. Cool. Uh, uh, can the regions be joined so that a group is created yet the original is still available for editing? I think if you, before editing, you create a new region uh, that will preserve the original uh, so then you can continue editing and everything is going to be stored in the original region. So uh, just make sure that you create a, either a duplicate region or, or, or you, you store a region before you start merging and, and editing. Uh, JT asks, will you be able to unmerge a region? Uh, right now you're not. You can undo uh, a merge region command, but if you merge several regions together, the only way to separate those is segmentating and creating those regions uh, manually again. Yeah. Uh, Bill was asking, how can this data be integrated into design software such as Civil 3D? So we recommend that you export uh, point clouds via recap format from TBC, and then uh, you can import uh, in, into recap. From there, you can uh, send from recap to Civil 3D. 
Uh, and for the geometry, so if you collected points and if feature coded, you would export those with the DWG or DXF. Uh, Mel asks, uh, can you c clarify how the feature coding was done? Um, was it from the measurements or from uh, data with the scan? So it's a combination of both. As you saw, I brought in data, or the data uh, from the SX10 was brought in and it had point measurements with feature codes. We processed that as well. Uh, one thing to note is the CAD objects that we create um, in TBC can be feature coded. So if I created points, line strings, things like that, I can associate them to layers and I associate those points to feature codes and actually process them again. And if it's a tree, uh, it'll bring up that tree symbol and, and any other information associated with the feature code. Yeah, <clears throat> so all of the uh, functionality that we, uh, that we show, uh, showed with the SX10 is applicable to S7. The only difference is S7 doesn't have the scan station setup type. So with, uh, with the S7, you can also collect scans and you won't see as many points probably as in SX10, but all of the TBC operations, uh, everything uh, works fine. Uh, yeah, another question that came up uh, was how would you re reclassify an object um, such as a power pole that was colored um, green for vegetation? This came from Will. Um, so in that case, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a little diffi difficult because um, a power pole can be quite um, easily interpreted as a tree due to the wires and the height. Um, the simplest way is to select the power pole and um, add it to a, um, a pole region. Or what you can do um, in the case of like a ground region, if you, ex you extract the ground from the point cloud and some of the ground region maybe takes part of a building or part of a tree stump, what you can do is actually take that ground region and extract again from it and, and run the classification command um, again just on that um, segmented region and see if you get better results there. Yeah, uh, Harry is asking for the network license installations. You have to purchase an equal number of scanning modules as TBC licenses. So if you want to keep it all on the same uh, uh, network license manager, you have to uh, uh, match the number of uh, modules with the number of additions. But we do have the ability to split your uh, uh, licenses. If you have 10 TBC advanced and you only need three TBC scanning modules, we can split your uh, network license into seven that have TBC advanced and three that have advanced plus scanning module. Uh, work with our uh, distributor and our support can uh, help you uh, do that. Uh, this uh, webinar is going to be uh, uh, available for viewing and we will be repeating this uh, session uh, uh, in the afternoon. And uh, for more information, uh, go to T TBC site. So TBC 380 is not yet available. Uh, but uh, we are hoping to make it available on uh, Trimble.com soon, and there's going to be tutorials on working with the SX10 and uh, and the scan scan information. Uh, with that, I want to thank you all for your participation. Yeah. Apologize for running a little bit over time. We really want to kind of demonstrate as much as we could in in this power hour. And if we missed any of your questions, feel free to reach us uh, via email. Um, and uh, again, you can join us in the afternoon session at 4 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, and we can uh, emphasize some of the some of these workflows a little bit better. Yeah, and feel free um, at the end of this uh, webinar when you log out, when you get the uh, the feedback form, to put anything else uh, that you feel is relevant there, or if you have any feedback for Boris and I, uh, we appreciate it, and we always want to improve these these uh, webinars. And thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you, and uh, have fun using TBC. And that's extended. <laughs>